What, would, what do we want to talk about today? I want to talk today about how to get out of a rut. That's important. And so I think it might be helpful for some people. Maybe you're in a spiritual rut. Maybe there are some things happening in your life relationally. You do relational with conflict. Rut. You're in a Ooh. relational rut. Oh. Um, oh, my goodness. Maybe you're in a physical rut. Maybe oh. some of your physical health has been, um, you know, draw, you've had drawbacks there. And I think it'd be kind of helpful for some people. You know, we're not perfect. And every no one is exempt from uh, walking through a rut in their life at one point or another. So I think it'd be helpful... Let's kind of, mm -hmm. you know, bounce around some some ideas on what do you guys think? What are your initial thoughts on that? Well, I mean, the Maybe very first it. thing that came to my mind when you brought up getting over a rut is what Paul writes, you know, in Philippians where he says, you know, forgetting what is behind and straining forward to the future that I've been called heavenward in Jesus Christ. And I think one of the biggest things that gets people mm -hmm. stuck in ruts is they, they live in the past. And they, whether yeah. it's like, even something good, you know, like Uncle Rico and Napoleon Dynamite, you know, reminiscing of his good old football days, right? And he's stuck in that rut, living in mm. his van down by the river because he's stuck in the good old days of high school football. Or it's you're stuck in a rut because you're living in the past over something you did that was terrible and how it hurt your life or, you know, hurt your yeah. marriage or hurt your business or whatever. And so I think a lot of the times we could, uh, we can live in the past rather than looking forward to the future that God has for us mm. and, uh, really believing that God has a plan for our life. Uh, instead of believing that he has a plan for our life, it, it can sometimes feel like the story's already been written. And so we live in, live in the past. So I honestly, that's the first thing that comes mm. to my mind. I mean, how have you guys even experience that in your lives or any more thoughts on that because honestly i think that's probably like the number one causes for people to stay in ruts is that they, they're not able to see a vision for a new future because mm. they're stuck in the past yeah i'd agree with that i also can I thinking can even about our church yeah when i got there thinking that's about true. yeah personal things in my own life right. i mean i definitely think living in the past is a huge probably the number one i would say of people being sticked in a rut, but I think there's something even deeper. I think people live in the past because, and stay in that rut because they, uh, that's when things were maybe going how they thought it should be going. Those are the good and old that's days. That's where they thought they were living in God's plan. That's where they thought, well, mm -hmm. things are progressing. God's really working in my life. So I'm going to, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to live in that rut. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think, um, the, the un, there's something under that and I'm trying yeah. to articulate it. Well, I would just you say know? this on top of that. Like, what worked then won't always work now. Right. And what works now won't always work in the future. And so I think one of the things, this is kind of more of a practical point, but if you want to get out of a rut... Um, sometimes you have to do things you've never maybe done before. You got to have disciplines yeah. in your life that yeah. maybe you didn't have before. You got to make changes maybe that you haven't made before. Um, because oftentimes what got you through a past season won't always get you through the current season. I mean, sure. I'll even just share this from my own life personally, you know, <clears throat> what worked for me when I was single didn't work for when Jamie and I were married. What worked for when Jamie and I were married and had no kids didn't work for when we had one kid. Now we have two kids. And so life is constantly changing. And mm. so you have to constantly uh, change with it as far sure. as how do you prioritize your time with your spouse? God, how do you organize that? How do you schedule all that? Right. Because what can happen is, is you can get into a rut where, OK, this used to work, mm -hmm. you know, and this is what you know can happen in churches. And this is how our church was when, you know, we first got there. It was like, well, this is how we've done it since the 80s or the 90s or even the 50s. Or, you know, the church is founded in 1907. So it's like, but you get stuck in those ruts because like what worked then doesn't work now and you have to sure. change the way uh, you do things. And it doesn't mean that like the foundational things of life should ever change, right? Like the Bible says God never changes. Yeah. The gospel never changes. His love for us never changes. Um, but uh, how you kind of practically navigate through life and, and a lot of those details, that, that, does, that does change and should change over time. Mm -hmm. and can we give a little, because I'd love to get down to the details, down to yeah. the practicality for our listeners. Yes. Because um, personally, I don't like when people, and I'm not saying you're doing this. Actually, I am saying you're doing this. You need yeah. to stop. Whoa. <laughs> I'm you not saying you're doing this. Right now. I like to confront it on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think you are specific. I want to get even more specific mm -hmm. as far as steps people can do. Because I think this is a really important topic. I think a lot of people might feel stuck in a rut. Yeah. And I want, can we come up with yeah. questions maybe that 
or something. Yeah, like I, I action steps. Questions. That's good. I, One thing, and yeah. I think we should all discuss this. Something that I was thinking about that I heard Pastor mm-hmm. talk about is a lot of people say, "I want what God has planned for me. I want mm-hmm. God's plan in my life." And I even ask you to pray. Mm-hmm. I have an A B decision, mm-hmm. and I don't know what to pick because yeah. I want God's plan in my life. And even that, even undecision becomes a rut, right? Sure. And I, I, I heard a pastor once say, look at three different things as far as what skills skills God has given you, mm-hmm. what opportunity God has given you, mm-hmm. and then what is the pathway that's most glorifying to God. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's the most important one. But a lot of times, especially if you're really mm-hmm. trying to seek Jesus, two paths can be glorifying to God. Sure. Right? So, sure. Yeah. Uh, so asking those other two questions, I think, for me, is what could lead to me going, oh, this is the mm-hmm. skills and these opportunities that I have mm-hmm. um, that God has given me. These are gifts. I think that's a good question to ask yourself too. Yeah, and I think approaching it like that, though, of asking questions, you know, you could ask yourself the question, you know, why am I in a rut? Yeah. What what is causing this? Right. Uh, What is something, you know, I'm doing to contribute to this? Uh, And I honestly think the best way to actually get a better understanding of it is not just for you to ask questions, but for you to bring somebody else in to ask the questions for you. Because a lot of times people can see things that you can't. Right. And, you know, that's when Proverbs talks about, you know, there's wisdom and an abundance of counselors. And uh, the Bible talking about us bearing one another's burdens and not forsaking community, right? But continuing to be in Christian community with accountability where people care for us and they're willing to speak the truth and love to us uh, to say, hey, this is a blind spot you have in your life and this is what's keeping you in a rut and you might not even know it, right? And I think there's been times in our lives where we've all maybe done that uh, for one another to help us... uh, get out of a situation. But I think community is really key when it comes to getting out of ruts. And I think that takes, in order to be in humility, uh, in community, it takes humility, right? Because you have to mm-hmm. humble yourself to say, I need help. Yeah. Can you speak into this for me? And I think for a lot of people, they stay yeah. stuck in their ruts it's because tough. it's like they're trying to get out of the quicksand that they're sinking in, but they're trying to climb out themselves and you can't do it. You need somebody to actually intervene and yeah. pull you out. Yeah. And you, and you know what? You can't see yourself clearly unless you have the proper perspective. And so yeah. I think that's a part of the early process of stepping out of the rut yourself mm-hmm. is going, mm-hmm. how can I shift the way I'm seeing myself? how I'm seeing my problems. If I am I being overly negative? Do I have a godly perspective? Am I involving not just godly people, but the Holy Spirit to help me filter through what's happening so that I'm not either A getting caught up in my feelings or B staying stuck in really destructive patterns. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a bit, one of the biggest aspects of it because it's like man you you can get really stuck in a circular um you know, way of living where it's Mm -hmm. like rut, motivate yourself out of the rut, get back in that. And unless you have like real guide rails for your Mm -hmm. life and things that can anchor you, um, like the truth and the word of God and godly Mm -hmm. people. And, um, you're never gonna be able to break that cycle in your life. So, no, it's so true. And like, even just speaking personally like I kind of found myself in a little bit of a rut about a month ago mm. just I think wow. I think emotionally and spiritually just feeling kind of tired yeah. I think it's because just like I said when you go through different <laughs> times you guys are like oh this is good he's opening up right but like what worked in previous seasons won't work in current ones right so like yeah. it's different when I was not married <laughs> married one kid two kids and like we just had our second kid we're starting yeah. this new church all these things I started to feel drained and so, like, I was like, you know what? I need to get help. And so, for the last month, I was literally just telling you this right before we started. Yeah. But for the last month, I've been every week seeing a counselor slash coach. It's and good, I'm going to wow. be seeing him indefinitely, basically. Wow. It's not like a thing that I'm committing to for a month or even six months or a year. I've actually kind of committed to just seeing him for the foreseeable future right. until... Like it's I doubt cool. he does. Yeah, yeah, and that's so. And, you're and, that's and he's a, yeah. he's an older pastor that's you know almost sixty, and he's a lot older than me, and is and a that's spiritual an father. Point and that maybe we should point and out. And he helped me get out of it. I'm out of it now, by the way. Just so oh, you guys know. Yeah, praise the Lord. Out so, of the rut. Right. Yeah. That's great. I'm out of it. Um, well, that's an interesting point there, though, that you said about him being an older pastor, right? Yeah. Because sure. that's someone who, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know the guy, but probably has more wisdom than you. Definitely has Definitely. More experience. Right. He's a doctor. Oh, wow. There you go. So you're you're 
not only humbling yourself, but you're also seeking counsel at a higher level, I guess, right? Yeah. So I think that's an important point to talk about or to bring up is if you're in a rut and then you look at your community around you yeah, and they're not, they're mm. either also in ruts. They're either under your level of maturity or way behind sure. it. And I think you need somebody at least at your level of maturity or near your level of maturity and ideally somebody significantly Spiritual above maturity? It. Spiritual, what? emotional, yeah. relational, all of it. I mean, you want somebody as a whole probably, that is as mature or right. near your maturity or above your maturity to right. be able to speak into your life. Right. And also yeah, physical sure. maturity. Don't be asking six-year-olds for life advice. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I agree with good you. Good rule I, I thought that was I will say this. Say. My two-year-old sometimes, she'll, she drop, drops she'll, drop, wisdom. Wisdom. she'll drop some wisdom on me <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. That's hilarious. She'll call me out. <laughs> like the other day, she's like, Dad, get off your phone. I'm trying like, to talk wow. to you. I was Jesus like, oh. She said that? Oh, yeah. She's, she's only two years old. She's like, she's like, Daddy, put that down and play with me. I'm wow. like, dang, I yeah. suck. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you know what? Out of the uh, mouth of babes, as scripture says. That's true. So, They're the most honest. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's so funny yeah. that she's able to call you out like that. <laughs> she did. Um, she holds nothing back. Well, you know, her name, Ariella, means lioness of God, and she's got a little Ooh. fire. Yeah. Nice. Well, I have a verse I want to share that I think can kind of get to an underlying <laughs> aspect of the thought process um, that I think is helpful when we're struggling or we're in a rut or uh, whatever it may be in, in that regard. Read so it, Pastor. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything is excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. I want to kind of get your guys' thoughts on on this. Mm. I think this is a, this almost is a, really a remedy. I like to call this the, the remedy for worry uh, that... Ooh, that um, nice. Paul, well, Paul a lot gives. of people are stuck in ruts because of their worry and anxiety and fear. Right? Yeah, you know, because and and you know the Greek word that's translated into fear or anxiety it means to choke. Yeah, right. It means to yeah. you know that's how a lot of you might feel in the middle of a rut right now. You literally feel choked. You feel like right. your breath is be ta- being taken away, and that's the result of negative thinking. Yes, because that's what he's getting at here. He's like, hey, you know, whatever's lovely, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever is admirable, whatever is praiseworthy, like, and he gives that whole list, right? Think about such things, and then the peace of God, yes, right, will enter, enter into your life. Yes. So, um, really, I've actually never thought about that verse in that capacity. I've always, mm. and I don't know why. But yeah. I've always, maybe because it's how it was preached to me, but I've always thought of it as a mm. um, verse towards holiness. Yeah. Instead of peace. peace. Yeah, like whatever is pure, whatever you know. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. your mind pure. No, it's a, yeah, it's a way of thinking yeah. that can. Which I think weakness. it is. A, a yeah. Of yeah, you're, you're just saying that. how it's but been talked about. Towards, um, yeah. Uh, solving words. Well, and I think when you have a negative mindset, you're going to stay yeah. stuck in a rut because uh, oh, I could never get through this. Right. Oh. um... <clears throat> I could never find a way out or they'll always be like that yeah. or I'll always struggle with this temptation. That's negative thinking. And, um, this isn't like a self-help thing of like, Hey, the no, power of positive thinking, but the I, Bible the, the teaches Bible, on yeah. proper thinking yeah. and the Bible teaches actually, even in the old Testament in the Psalms about healthy, godly self-talk. Yeah. So it's biblical. Self-talk isn't, um, yeah. I'm biblical. Yeah. Uh, but there is a, um, yeah, the power of positive thinking yeah. and manifestation. Right, that's and I, not, you know, if I think the right thing and if I say the right thing, it'll happen to me. Like yeah. that's not what we're getting at here. Yeah. But what we're saying is, 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 is you fix your thoughts on who God is and the truth of His love for you and His faithfulness and His plan for your life, and you begin to actually meditate on Scripture, which yeah. I think is the best way to actually renew your mind. Yes. It's taking passages of Scripture that are directly speaking to whatever you're going through and mm. then hiding His Word in your heart so that you yeah. will not sin against Him. Yeah. You will not stay in that place, but you will be able to move forward in faith. And right. uh, I think it's just so key because negative thinking, uh, you can think negatively about your spouse. Uh, and that can cause your marriage to be in a rut, right? Sure. So if you're in a, and I, I kind of wanted to talk about marriage actually for a little bit, yeah, just because I, I think a lot of people good. are in a rut and um, their marriages and they feel stuck. And I'll just say this, right? Let, let's apply that uh, Philippians four, uh, you know, list. 
to marriage, okay? Is yeah. what you're thinking about your spouse, is that lovely? Is it, is it true? Is it true, right? Yeah. Is it admirable, yeah. right? Um, is you thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just so sick of how they do that. I'm so sick of how they talk about that. I'm sure. so, right? And you're allowing bitterness to build up and then your relationship gets stuck in a rut where it's this, like what you were talking yeah. about, this cycle, oh. this circular cycle where you just continue to go down those same pathways that aren't healthy for you and mm. so i think like what if you just changed the way you thought about your spouse yeah what if like instead of seeing their sins and their weaknesses as things that you hate and despise say you know what i right. empathize with why they're doing that and i see that they're doing that because they're broken and um i'm not going to sugarcoat it it's still wrong but i love them i forgive them and i want to help them not throw a stone at them for what they're doing right mm. and it's like wow you change that thinking and uh, you're, the way you think about them, it'll change the way you act towards them. And when it changes the way yeah. you act towards them, they're going to receive that. And that might just change them too and then change your relationship as a whole. But I don't know. Any other thoughts? Yeah, on, I want to speak to that even yeah. more so because I think it's it's really easy to be anxious. And it's easy to fall into a state of depression. And it's it's so easy to be negative all the time, yeah. right? You could be in any situation yeah. and always find something wrong with whatever thing That's that right. it is. There are some people, they could be um, in a moment of pure bliss, but still find a problem to complain about and be negative it's about. It's all about perspective. Right? So that's what I'm saying. It's like yep. the, the encouragement, maybe you're listening to this right now and you don't have control over the circumstance you're in. And you know, so oftentimes, you know, it's it, what you're going through can't be made right in just a moment of time. But what you can do is shift your perspective mm -hmm. and, and think and focus on what is good, what is lovely. And there actually are scientific implications on that, that yeah. it actually changes our brain chemistry when yeah. we're thankful for things and when we show a sense of gratitude yeah. towards life. And mm -hmm. so the spiritual does affect the biological in that way and the psychological. And um, so I think yeah. that's important, too. Well, you just reminded me of one of my favorite quotes from Chuck Swindoll. Mm. where he says, uh, life is 90% of your attitude and 10% of what happens to you. Yeah. Man. So if you approach it in 90%, so, and there yeah. isn't like a scientific thing that you can with that, but I, I think it's such a great... That's I love that. He's like, listen, yeah. in 90% of situations, That's beautiful. it's all on how you frame it. Yeah. Right? It's, all, it's all about your perspective. It's all about your attitude. And if you would just learn to say, you know what, instead of this uh, being a problem, instead of me looking at this as a problem, I'm going to look at this as an opportunity. I'm going to look at this as an opportunity for God to teach me. I'm going to mm -hmm. look at this as an opportunity for me to become closer to Christ. I'm going to look at this as an opportunity, right, to go down the path that God wants me to go towards, right. not a problem that's going to stall me and keep me from my purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in the perspective. Yes. You're, uh, you, said the, yeah. you said thankfulness. Which we mm -hmm. Yeah, being about. thankful. You said, that's key. You kind of just slipped that in there, but I think that's a very key element. Because yeah. when you do what we're talking about here, it's not based in thankfulness to God for those things. Mm -hmm. And it is just self-help. It's just self. That's it. It's just self-talk, right? Yeah. Which will fade. But if it's based in, mm -hmm. I'm saying these things because of who God yeah. is, what he's done. Yeah. I trust he's going to do the plan he has for me in the mm. place that he, he made for me. Yeah. Then, um, yeah, I just think that's super key. And why that's Jesus great. says in all things, give thanks. You know, yeah. another thing we were talking about having a rut in relationships and getting past that. But what about for people that have been stuck in a rut in their uh, in their work? What would you oh, guys say to somebody that because I think there are a lot of people. Um, that I know that feel stuck in what their what their work is. In fact, I saw a stat. I think it was something around fifty yeah. percent of people feel dissatisfied with their workplace. And honestly, it's probably higher than that. It definitely. Is. But what would you say to somebody uh, from mm. again looking at culture through the lens of Christ? What would you say to them? Why don't, hey, you are the non-pastor. Let's true. let you I start. Yeah, you're in the, the uh, Amazon employee. Yeah. Go ahead. What would Jeff say? Oh, yeah. Jeff would say work harder. Work yeah, harder. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With his evil Bond laugh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Dude, he's got an evil laugh. <laughs> he really does. It's but scary. you know, he did an interview, and he's like, I don't know why. I know it sounds evil, but that's just my laugh. I'm just <laughs> a joyous guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff. Well, very genuine. I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, I, I. this is a really good question. Mm. And the answer that I want to say is an answer I don't think people 
would like. Yeah. Because I think <laughs> mm-hmm. the easy way to do it, or the, the worldly way to answer this, quit I guess. Quit and go to the next one. Not quit and go to the next one, but find your passion. You know, sure, sure. Find a, wow. try, yep. get, try to get to the point where, if you know, if you love what you do, you're never working a day in your life. Like yeah, yeah, that, yeah, type, that of type of stuff. stuff. Sure. You know? I don't think that's real. And, and fix the, basically that just is fix the problem. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like physically fix your worldly problem. Yeah. I'm going to not say that. And I'm actually going to say... You're going to go contrarian. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. going to say... Whoa. I'm not going to say... I'm, I can go real harsh with it. Yeah, don't do, do it. it. I'm not going Come to yeah, don't do Come that. Come down I'm hard. not going to do that. I'm, yeah. I'm going to say be thankful. Be thankful yeah. that you even have a job. Right? Mm-hmm. Be thankful that you have a place to witness wow. to others. Be thankful that you have now money in your pocket to take care of your family, to mm-hmm. yeah. do things that you are passionate Use the money to do things that you're yeah. passionate about that fill you up, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever those are. Use the gifts that God gave you to do those things. Mm. Um, wherever yeah. I know you might feel like you're in a rut in your career or and for whatever reason, whether it's, oh, I need a new job or I don't like what, I, what mm. I'm doing or I'm not mm. growing or uh, whatever that is, um, you need to stop first and just be thankful, thankful for what you do have. So not saying yeah. don't want to progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't want to. It's okay. There isn't a time to move on. Or if you're not happy things. or whatever. Sure, that's but that's the starting funny. point, though, is being but thankful. The starting point is you have to be thankful. Yeah, I agree you have to be with thankful that. for what you. you yeah, have. and I I want to add to that too because not only do you have to be <clears throat> thankful, but you have to realize that it's it's not meaningless what you're doing. Exactly. Some people yeah. they hate their job because right. they think it's meaningless. It's not what right. they want to do right. right now. So it's what's the point? Why am I even doing this? Right. Well, the Bible tells us that in whatever we're doing, whether we're eating or yeah. drinking, to do it unto the glory oh, of God. Oh, that's what I was just about yes. to say. So, yeah, so Colossians gotcha. 3, 23. And oh, so, hey, the same spirit. It's, so, it's the same thing. So, so it's good. you know what? If I'm grinding coffee beans and serving coffee to yeah. people, if hey. I'm working a corporate job, if I'm working with my hands every day, whatever yeah. it is, you can do that to the glory of God. You can yeah. honor God and help other people and yeah. love people. You can yeah. make somebody's day with whatever yeah. you're doing. Mm-hmm. You can treat your coworkers that are difficult to deal with with yeah. respect and love and dignity. Yes, you they'll can, notice the difference. Yeah, you can be light and salt in the world. God has sent uh, his his church to not be absent from the marketplace and from the from right. the world, mm-hmm. to, but to be in it and to glorify yeah. Him to and be to help world, others. Of it. Yeah. So and real quick side point: this is not biblical at all, but. Yeah. If you look at probably some of the most successful people, they do the trades. They're yeah, living man. out. They work with those traits that 100%. you just described. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's not, not being prosperity right now. Where no, if you live no. like if yeah, you work yeah, like you rich. working for God, He's gonna bless you, and you're gonna yeah. you know grow and make all this money. Come on, Joel. But but that's right he deserves it <laughs> if you do do that you'll have a much higher chance of that stuff happening. Hundred percent. Then yeah. You know, yeah. Just having a bad attitude yeah. and going, oh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, and then you, that's you. You definitely won't be successful or grow or whatever. For if sure. You have that attitude. Right. Yeah, well, I, I think two things, too, on top of that. And, and going and building on to what you said, like, I think work is a yeah. witness. So, like, if, Come on. if you're treating those difficult people, yep. right, with a Christ-like attitude, if you're um, not cutting corners like other sure. people are, if you are uh, being an example in the workplace, a Christ-like example, people are going to notice that your work can be a witness, and you can actually lead people to Christ. You, yeah. can, you can be a light in this darkness, mm-hmm. right? Because um, let's be real, right? This world is a dark place. And if you're that light in that darkness, you'll actually stand out and you can point people to Christ through that. But then what I'd also say on just kind of a more practical note, you know, is like some of you are stuck in a rut because you aren't in the right place. And there is a time. And there's a real time for that. There is a time. I think uh, we live in a world where people probably move on too quickly. I think most people today need to learn that, hey, uh, number one. Wherever you work, it's not going to be perfect, and it's going to take a lot of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears, and that's just the reality of, like, the curse. Like in Genesis 3, right, sin enters into the world, and what is one of the curses? God's like, listen, Adam, you're a farmer, and there's going to be weeds, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to be tough. So I think, you know, the, we a lot, of, a lot of times we think, you know, the grass is always greener. Not necessarily. There might just mm. be as many weeds there as there are in the, in the lawn you're at now. Um, yeah. So I would say... 
say, you know, work hard where you're at, but also like if you're not in a good place, maybe they're not utilizing your skill sets or you're not utilizing, you know, your passions and all those things, or maybe it's just not a good fit where, where you're at on your yeah. team with your boss and stuff, then yes, there's a time to move on, but also maybe don't move on until you have the next thing too, you know? Well, that's the three things um, that I pointed out, right? Yeah. Which is, is it... Um, Sorry. Is it a uh, is it glorifying to God? This new yeah. pathway is it part of your skill set that God gave you, and is it is there an opportunity yeah. that God has opened up? Yeah. yeah, that's good. The opportunity is. Kind of but I do point. think a lot of the times we move on so quickly that we miss out on what we could be a part of if we persevered sure. through it and got to the other For side. Sure. Like I think about the first two and a half years at the church. Where like I could have quit at any point in time because it was so hard for sure. me um, because of how much of a rut the church was in and how stuck the church was in the past yeah. and how hard it was to not see things grow. Yeah. And at any time I could have just said, you know what, this isn't the right fit for me uh, for a variety of reasons. I'm gone. I'm out. See you later. But then if I did that, I wouldn't be experiencing with you guys and with many others, like all the amazing things God is doing right now. And so what I'd say is maybe ask yourself that question. Okay. If I quit now, am I going to miss mm. out on something amazing? If I persevere for another few years or is, this like if I quit now I'm saving myself from mm. just being a part of something longer that I shouldn't be a part of I think maybe asking yourself that like am I escaping the struggle where on the other side of the struggle there might be something that God wants from me or am I leaving something because there actually isn't something on the other side yeah. right. that God wants from me and you know what the struggle is it meant it, it, it does cause pain and it inflicts um, this sense of discomfort <clears throat> but the struggle is what shapes us to actually live in the calling of God in our life. It's like with where you're at and really all of us, like I think about all the moments in, in my past and, and seasons where like I hated where I was out there. I was uncomfortable. I was dissatisfied. I did not like it, but I didn't understand then what I know now. And it's that that was shaping me. Yeah. That was, that was, that was helping me build some spiritual muscles and some, some experiences that I can have and garner so I can use them in the time that I'm in right now. And it's like, it's incredible. Sometimes we're in that time of the in between and we don't really fully understand what God's doing. Mm -hmm. If you could just be faithful in that time, however long it may be, you can reap a harvest later on in your life and you might not yeah. understand it now, but that I think that is the faith aspect of it. So, let me yes. let me read a verse here actually. Yeah, sure. I'm going to pull this up. I literally read this last night and what you said totally just triggered it. It's uh, Galatians. It's a verse that's familiar to you guys. Galatians chapter yeah. 6, right? And uh <clears throat> right here. Here we go. It says, let us not become weary in yeah. doing good for at the proper time. We will reap a harvest if yes. we do what not give, give up. up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all the people, mm. especially to those who belong to the family of believers. That's Galatians 6, verse 9 to 10. And right. what I just say to some of you um, that are maybe struggling, you're in a rut, uh, in a relationship, your family, um, maybe at work or just even emotionally or whatever, like don't give up. Don't God give is up. with you. He is for you. Don't you do can it. do all things through Christ who strengthens you, right? Look to yeah. him for strength. Look to him for hope. And if you stay on the path that he has for you, if you don't give up, you might not see any of the results now, but in time as you continue to work hard yes. at it, you will reap a harvest, but it's only if you don't give up. If you give up, you don't get to experience the fruit that could come later. Mm. I just keep thinking about the Israelites in the desert. That's yep. exactly right. That's the yep. perfect picture of right. Yep. I mean, God made them wait four years before yep. they got their, yep. their harvest, their promised land. Yeah. So. Yep. And I, but I even think, too, a part of that obviously wasn't. Yes, in, in Sovereign's plan that it took sure. 40 years. It's, but it's we a know complex geographically situation, that they could have gotten there yeah. much quicker. Right. And also so it was a form of punishment as well. Yes. God said this generation will not be entering the promised land. Which yeah, I, the only I, Joshua and Caleb got I think right. that leads to the next part, though, of what I want to discuss, and that's um, if you're in a, in a rut, I think one of the things that will help you propel yourself out of it is to own it. Like own whatever it is that has caused you to get into that space. And so maybe you're listening to this Repent. right now. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. some, some people, you're listening to this right now and you're contributing your rut to somebody else. Yeah. 
yeah. you're contributing it to someone else's actions. I'm the victim. Something that they, you're in yeah. victim mode. And maybe you were a victim. Yeah. Maybe there was something that happened to you sure, and it was terrible. Yeah, it's and someone mistreated you yeah. and they were unkind towards you or they took advantage of you of yeah. who you are. And it's, it's it affected yeah. you to the point where you're in the place that you're in. But I would just say to you, own whatever you could take responsibility for. Own what you mm. can that can help you move forward. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says this. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Kind of mm. want to hear some of you guys' thoughts on just this idea of like, what does it look like to own it yeah. and take on that mentality? Yeah, no, I love that. I mean, I think it comes down mm. to, and this is just a spiritual principle, right? We mm. have our three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The flesh being our own mm. sinful desires in our heart and in our body. Right. The devil being, obviously, the enemy of God, the enemy of our souls, right? He's the lion yeah. that prowls around to uh, to destroy us. And then the world, that's the uh, values uh, that are around us that we see in pop culture and just all over the place mm -hmm. on the Internet and social media and whatever. But at the end of the day, between the world, the flesh, and the devil, your biggest problem is not the devil and <laughs> yeah. it's not the world. It's you. Your biggest problem is you. And so what I'd say is yeah. this. Is yeah, if in your past you were victimized, I'm sorry, but don't allow yourself to be labeled as a victim. Yeah. Um, overcome it, and uh, everything might not be your fault, but the things that are your fault, take full responsibility for it, um, and come to God in repentance. Come mm -hmm. to Him with a sorrowful heart over your sin or the ways you've fallen short. And here's the good news: when you do that, the Bible promises that you will find mercy. You will find grace. What's mercy, right? It's not getting what you do deserve, the punishment you deserve for your sins. What's grace? It's the love that you get freely, love that you don't deserve, love that you don't work for, but love that you simply receive as a gift, right? So I think when we take full ownership of our sin and what has contributed to us being stuck relationally, yeah. emotionally, professionally, whatever it is, when we take ownership of that, God honors that, right? The Bible yeah. says that God opposes the proud, but he it's gives grace, grace to the humble yes. and that he actually elevates the humble. He promotes them. Right. And so God looks uh, not for perfect people, uh, right. but for people that know they're not perfect. And he goes, okay, that's the person I can forgive. That's the person I can strengthen. And that's the person I can push forward into their future. I want to add another thing to that is that here's what owning it doesn't look like. It doesn't look like apologizing, saying I'm sorry, whether it's, you know, seeking repentance from God or uh, trying to seek forgiveness from somebody else. It doesn't look like saying, hey, I'm sorry for this, but I did that because, it, you know, X, Y, and Z. <coughs> you, ever, you ever hear people? I did oh, this, people period. Apologize. Yeah. People, people well, who are apologizing, the but in their apology, they're placing the blame on them. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I'm excuse. sorry I did that, but I did that because you did that yeah. towards me, or this was happening in my life, so that's why I did that to you. Yeah. You know what's really beautiful, and I've even found this in my in my marriage and, and mm -hmm. learning this with my wife, is I mean, if I hurt my wife, if I say something wrong or did something wrong, what doesn't help is me going, hey, I'm sorry, I love you, I did that because of this. W what she needs to hear is, I love you, I'm sorry. Right. Please period. forgive me, period. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, maybe you're a husband or your wife or you're in relational conflict in other areas of your life right now. And, and whatever percentage you own, whether it's 10 percent or 100, own whatever that is. And what you'll find is uh, reconciliation, I think, in relationships. Yeah. People don't take reconcile because they're too proud yeah. to own it. Responsibility. Yeah. I'm actually going to take this time, honey. I'm really <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Babe. You're listening, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. I love the you. trash right? is full. I left today. But I do, but I you did, did do that. Thing, so. <laughs> you know the thing. She you did. Know you did do it. She did. I saw it. <laughs> That's great. So, any additional thoughts to, to that, or how can we um, kind of wrap a bow around this conversation? <laughs> wrap a bow? Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. think of that, yeah. Well, I would just say this uh, as kind of an invitation if you do feel stuck in any way of your life, uh, and you live in the area, or even if you don't live in the area, um, the Tri-Valley um, here in the East Bay, uh, reach out to us and we'd love to help. Yeah, we'd love Royal to just Church. be a, per, uh, a person that you could just talk to. Uh, we'll listen to you. We'll help you. We'll be a sounding board. And uh, we'd be happy to help. So I, I actually would just like yeah. to say that. Even if you're not in the area, you could shoot us a message in our Instagram or an email if you're into that type of thing still. And uh, Yeah. 
We'd love to help. I, last thing. If you're in a rut, don't isolate yourself. Yeah. Stay committed to community. We've talked about this before, but there are too many spiritual nomads and, uh, yeah. and not enough people that are willing to be a part of building the kingdom of God and building each other, one another up mm-hmm. um, in community. And, and so, if you're not in a rut, still do that. Yes. That you're going to be in a rut. One it will, that can, preventative that can cause is much a rut. More, yeah. yeah. It can cause a rut. But also, 100%. preventative like, is much yeah. more than prescri- is better yeah. than prescriptive. Well, it's like change yes. the oil of your That's car because right. if you don't, the engine's eventually gonna blow up. And yeah. I know that there's someone here that has experience with that. Wait, oh my gosh! Your very That's first great. car. That's hey, a you're missing. I don't think so. Yes, I remember hey, you can okay. change the oil. We've all Why are you outing me right now. Engine blew up. Why are you That's actually me? a great. Uh, it's a great sermon illustration. I've actually used that. Um, I never told you well, that I was a youth 16, pastor. I used 17. that as a sermon illustration once. Yeah, okay. I didn't use your name. <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> but what you know? But if you want to, the stay reason out I did that is because you. That's <laughs> <laughs> a great example. Yeah, you know I, that was my mistake. But really, but really, it's because because you did something. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, I don't let your car's engines blow up because you didn't change the oil. Yes. Continually change the oil of your soul by getting accountability. And community, community from others, yeah. and yeah. Um, change your perspective. refreshment from your relationship with God. And as you do that, I think He'll guide you out of those ruts, so that the engine of your soul doesn't blow up. Wow, nice. what a lovely note to. It is. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't explode. We still ended on transportation yeah, in some way. Always, you said, I think the goal you for every the podcast bow, is to just to slowly, yeah. um, inadvertently kind of land <laughs> at the and kind of park yes. at some, sort some of kind of uh, analogy or, or metaphor. metaphor. Yeah, well, all right. Well, now that we've parked this plane. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. As always, we love you. Uh, rate, review. Send this to a friend. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know what? I like that. Let's really focus on that. Yeah, this time. if you could send send this the link, to a friend. Oh, text it to a friend right now. Yeah, do or it. DM it. Whatever. Do so, all those things. Thanks for hanging with us. We love you guys. Love you. Bye. Thanks.